starting to develop it well. But what um, uh, this concept is, is let's not think just about the software development, but the whole business, and think of software as part of the business. And in that way, we can actually combine the design and the development approach into a single loop, sort of actually a double loop, a small iterative loop, and then a bigger reframing loop, so that we can measure whether or not we're doing the right thing. Let's not guess. I mean, let's not even have those people like product manager and, um, and designers guess. Let's run experiments, because we can. We can, in fact, do a lot of experiments when we develop software. Um, we start out not with a product roadmap. It's a good idea, but maybe what we would start out with is understanding how we make money. Okay? How do we satisfy customers? What is it that we're going to measure to show that we're doing well? Say you start up and you're going to come and you have a, a thing that you're looking for, the number of people that convert from a low level to a high level, or you're looking for the amount of traffic that does referrals, or something like that. So you're measuring, when I put this out in the customer site, um, here's the way I expect to make money. So you need to know how is your business going to make money from this product, and instead of thinking about the product vision, you want to say, is my product got a fit in the market? Um, release plans are interesting, but the concept here is a little bit different. Why don't I create the smallest possible product I can think of, maybe not even a product, maybe just a button to click on, and see if, what, if people click on it? You know, I don't even have anything behind that. Um, Tom likes to tell a story about how we had how, um, a whole uh, business of um, bird cages was started just by buying some Google AdWords saying bird cage. And when people clicked through, there was nothing. Oh, they got a lot of clicks. So they said, man, maybe we could sell some bird cages. So they put some pictures on a website. And people clicked and it said, which one do you like? Buy this one. And uh, they, they, they clicked on one more than the others. And so the guys finally said, hmm, look at all the clicks we're getting on this bird cage. Maybe we should import some from China and start selling them. So, you know, you don't actually have to have the whole thing ready to know whether or not people are going to click through on a button. The minimum viable product is the smallest amount of thing you can think of to determine whether or not people are doing what your business model says they are going to do. And then, uh, forget the on-site customer, good idea that we have from XP, but maybe get out, of the, get out of the office and go visit customers, maybe a better idea. Um, and so what they're talking about here in these innovative environments where you're not just doing software, but you're designing the whole product is a loop called build, measure, learn. I build something, I release it, it doesn't take much to release software, I check whether or not what it was that I was going to learn, I learned, did it, did it work or didn't it? And then I go through this loop again. When I was designing products at 3M, 3M does scotch tape and masking tape and post-it notes and you know, brightness enhancement, lots of that kind of stuff. What we were taught was make a little, sell a little, learn a little, do it again. We never did great big products. We did small things, test markets. And then once we proved it, then we would expand. So we could try a whole lot of things and fail, it didn't actually matter because it didn't cost that much. When we found winners, they could be massively big winners. So build, measure, learn loop. Um, and then at the end of an iteration, when we put out a minimum viable product, let's see what we've learned. Should we keep going in the same direction or should we maybe pivot a little bit and go in a different direction? What does the data tell us? Not what great ideas people have, but what does our experiment tell us? Um, a backlog is interesting. How about a list of stuff we intend to learn? Not what we're going to do, but what we're going to learn. User stories, not a bad idea, but maybe we should think about my hypothesis. If I put this software out, I expect that the customers are going to behave in this way. Do they or don't they? Be good to know. And then your acceptance test is nice, but what about a split test? Half of my customers are going to get this screen, and half are going to get that screen, and which ones click through more? Is it the red button or the green button that you know, people see? Um, this is very common in both user interaction design and in almost all marketing, but you know, we could do a little bit of it in any kind of an innovative software stuff that we do. Um, in the idea that the software people are part of the whole business, done is not 
I am ready for it to be taken over by the system testers, or I am ready for it to be deployed. It's, has it been deployed and has it proved that it does what it's supposed to do from a customer's perspective? Was it software that, you know, caused people to convert more or whatever it was that the business plan was? So you want to validate that the software does what the customers are expecting if you're part of the whole business. Um, continuous integration is interesting. Continuous deployment is even more interesting because that's how you can do these experiments. Um, customer feedback, nice. Um, Cohort-based metrics. Cohort meaning every week I take a cohort of 100 new visitors and I follow them and I look at what percent of them do the things my business plan says. If my business plan says 13% are going to convert to higher level users, in this 100 do 13%, oops, it's only eight. Well, that's not enough. Next week I make some changes. I take another 100 cohort and after two weeks I'm expecting 13% to click through, I'm up at 9. Okay, I'm improving. I'm not there yet, but I'm improving. So cohort-based metrics are not, what are the raw numbers, but for any given 100, what percentage are doing the things my business plan wants them to do, and what, you know, and am I there yet? Does my business plan work? And if I'm not there, what do I have to do to get there? Um, product owner is interesting, but in this case, you're talking about an entrepreneur running a business that has the, the whole business team that's involved in trying to find out how to make this thing successful. So in this case, what you're doing is having a understanding of the problem as part of the whole problem. So anyway, I talked about three different approaches that you can take to the first one, which is understanding the problem. And I'm going to go to design a solution, okay? Any 